Hey y'all, this is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. Got uh, something that I want to talk to you about. Uh, it's just food for thought and another data point. But as uh, all these wars kick off, um, everybody's going to become, uh, not everybody, the nations will become territorial. Um, I've been bringing you the info about the possibility of sleeper cells waking up and wreaking havoc inside of this country, as well as in um, European nations, which could disrupt uh, the supply chain. It could disrupt production of goods and services that we rely on daily. Uh, the power grid could be taken out, so you won't have access to certain things, certain information, and banking money you won't be able to access money and the reason i want to talk about this is because i i haven't really been doing videos lately because i've had issues with my computer and internet service but also there are so many stories coming out like i just can't even keep up with it i don't even know what to talk about because it's just so much important stuff so it's kind of like i've um hate to use the word trauma, but it's just like so much info has come out that I just am kind of um, just shocked right now. And I'm really shocked and disappointed at how little our people, African-American black people, um, just are clueless and you just can't get them to focus, can't get them to believe, you can't get them to move. Although I can say a couple of my neighbors have been paying attention to me gardening and I guess they're seeing the signs or feeling something about to occur. Because yesterday I was outside um, doing some yard work, tilling up the garden. Why well, had somebody come till up my garden because my, my tiller was not acting right. And uh, my neighbor came over and she was like, uh, I see you getting your garden right. And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to get it right. I was like, I got to get something in the ground. It's already a month. I'm, you know, I was supposed to plant some stuff last month, but I didn't because I didn't have my tiller. I couldn't get it working. And the ground is so hard because it's just been so dry and it's much drier than it was when I dug this same garden plot up in the spring with my shovel. I couldn't do that this time. And so um, she was like, well, I want to plant some stuff, too. Um, I need to come over here and pay attention and see what you're doing because I think it's getting ready to get bad. I was like, you know, if you don't say, I've been trying to tell you for two years. Uh, but now it's like right at the tail end. And, you know, she's like paying attention. I'm busy about my business doing what I need to do for the day when your money ain't no good, for the day when you don't have no power, for the day when you can't go to the grocery store uh, because they have been commandeered by the government or by the UN or whoever is controlling this foolishness. So I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and, you know, people are watching but people are have not been preparing. And we're almost at the point where it's getting ready to be too late because the wars have kicked off. And in a matter of, you know, a few minutes, things could change and people are not going to be prepared for the change. So um, I want to talk about money today and banking. And, you know, I've talked about it a uh, a little bit throughout the year, but I want to place a little more emphasis on it today because of the call for a global, gee, I wish I had, I got a talking cold, um, called for by the um, folks over yonder who fighting the imposters over yonder. And because we live in cap, we're in captivity in Babylon, and amongst those people who do have done everything to everybody, yet they fail to recognize their sins, we are stuck with them, and so we are going to suffer consequences along with them. 
and a lot of our people are not prepared and they will be caught off guard. So I'm going to just share this with you. Um, so this article is from the Daily Mail and it came out in September of 2023. And I've been seeing a lot of articles about big banks, the big four or five banks closing branches and um, locations all across the country. They're big offices, big high rise offices. They've been shuttering them, laying off, you know, 500 people here, thousand people here uh, in, in major cities. So it's almost as if to me, this is my tinfoil hat on. To me, it's as, as if they know something. If you if you look at where they're closing banks, they're in major cities where there are lots of brown folk, black folk. Um, they're c- closing banks where there is, um, let's see, heavy military presence, uh, our military, close to military bases. I've noticed that. Um, in cities with huge populations of people, um, especially where poorer people live and, you know, just banks in general in, in cities, you know, at one point you didn't have to worry about, uh, not having a bank in your community. Now you be lucky if you have a bank in your county, depending on how many people are in the county. So banking is getting ready to become a lot more challenging for people. Having access to cash is going to be challenging. And I personally believe that the reason that these banks are also closing is because they're done with these CBDC pilots. They're almost done or have done enough sampling with the UBI, the Universal Basic Income Pilots. And they are ready to crash the system, which is why this war has has started. Notice ain't nobody trying to, you know, encourage peace and make things better. It's just like accelerated. Like they've been telling you they're going to accelerate or push us into this new global order. And they're doing it. They've been doing it gradually. And people have just been, you know, the, the water has been turned up a little bit. The temperature is getting a little bit hotter. But because you can barely notice the change, people have not really been paying attention. And so now we're at the point where it's getting ready to be fire. And folks are going to wake up and be like, oh, what happened? I didn't I didn't realize this was going on. And it's been going on for the last, you know, several years, but people haven't really been paying attention and they haven't been connecting all the dots. Everything is connected. So there's no such thing as there's one isolated thing that's going on uh, separate from all the other stuff that we've talked about. Everything is connected from the de-dollarization to BRICS, to these wars, to um, the uh, trade wars that's going on, the oil wars that's going on. Um, the civil unrest in all these different nations, the flooding of the immigrants in particular in Black, African-American, Black communities, uh, these are our replacements. So if you did not know, you know now. So, you know, while folks have been hung up on race, they missed the whole point of that was just a tool of division so that you know, we all can be arguing about equity and inequality and all the little buzzwords, diversity and inclusion, while they open the borders up and flood all flood flood this nation with all these different people who have been trained not to like us. And so now we got another group of people we're mad at. We got another group of people we got to argue with. We got another uh, fight that we have to fight. Instead of us just being like, okay, let's throw our hands up and move on. Um, let's let's leave here, let them have it. Because that's not that make no mistake, this world can run without us. They need us. Um, they'll never admit it, but they need us. They're, this whole system is built around our suffering, our labor, our 
uh, knowledge and our swag, like everything about this country from music to clothing to style, whatever you, you name it. They hate us, but they love us. They, you know, they hate us, but they love the, the, the style, the culture, uh, even the way that we talk. You know, you, you see people now using words that they would never have used decades ago, but we are liked. And so as these things transpire, we just got to be prepared. So let me get into this article. I've rambled enough. OK, so it says the majority of Americans are concerned about bank branches, bank branch closures, which are hitting poorer households hardest. As firms like Wells Fargo, PNC, and U.S. banks abandon, uh, and PNC, um, the U.S. banking industry is abandoning more than 1,000 locations this year alone. So it's a low, low income Americans are less likely to have a local bank branch, data shows. Branches provide a lifeline for those seeking financial advice in person. And so there's another article um, in this that I'm also going to share with you. Okay, so it says the majority of Americans are concerned about widespread bank branch closures, which are hitting lower income households the hardest. And that's all by design. They don't want us to have any wealth. They don't want us to have access to wealth. They don't want us to have information about how to attain wealth, like nothing in this country has ever been designed for us to build wealth, to save wealth. And I know there'll be some people, you know, five people be like, oh, well, I was able to do, you know, X, X, X thing. Good for you. Good for you. We ain't talking about you. We're talking about the majority of people who have had to go and trust that the gatekeepers will share information with them and give them opportunities so that they could build wealth and give them education so that they could put themselves in a position to get employment opportunities to gain wealth. Uh, there are just a lot of different things that, you know, our people simply will not acknowledge because they're some of our people, not all, that some of our people will not acknowledge because they are, they are better off or they had opportunities that some others did not have. And so they want to use themselves, use themselves as a, as a poster child. But, you know, when we look at this, historically, we've always been um, screwed when it comes to banking. Just look at the Freedmen's Bank. Look at look at what happened. They had a bank for black people, but it was run by white people. The white people ran off with the, ran off the plug, ran off with the money. The plug stole the money. And we ain't never recovered. They never gave us our money back. Never. If you didn't have proof of your deposits, you couldn't get your money back. Some people got pennies on the dollar back for their money that they had deposited in those banks. And so when you look at all these different institutions and all these games and gimmicks and things that people did to us back in the day, we've never been able to recover and we've never been made whole. We ain't got our 40 acres in a mule, so we don't have the resources like other groups. And we don't work together collectively to fight. Um, so that, that's another challenge. Uh, but bank closures have definitely impacted our communities. Just ba the banking industry in general has not helped our community, whether it be charge us, um, you know, higher interest rates for loans, turn us down for loans when you know, a lot of times we have better credit than other people. We've always had to deal with racism when it comes to money, banking and finance and employment. So um, there's no surprise that low income communities are going to suffer, which when they say low income, we know they're talking about us. Growing numbers of people are being left by, left without access to basic financial services as big name banks have axed more than 1,000 branches already this year. Data from S&P Global Market Intelligence shows a total of 1,144 national and regional banks were closed between January 1st and July 31st across 49 states 
with firms pulling out of some areas at a faster rate than others. <clears throat> and an, ex an exclusive survey by DailyMail.com has found that 51% of Americans are very concerned or somewhat concerned about the impact of dwindling outlets, which disproportionately affect poorer households. According to the analysis by research agency Opinion, Opin, Opinium, 10% of Americans with a household income less than $50,000 said they do not have a local branch, local bank branch. And I live in a, a rural area. So all the, the all the major bank branches, I think maybe with the exception of one, have left. So we don't have any major banks. We have regional banks. We don't have national banks anymore. Um, so... It's just a challenge for people. So it's just a percent, percentage of Americans without a local bank branch. Uh, under $50,000, 10%. People who earn $100,000 or more, that um, rate is 10%. I'm sorry, 3%. So if you earn under $50,000, you have, the, you know, you're 10% more likely to not have a local branch in your community, as opposed to somebody who earns a hundred thousand dollars or more, they have branches in their community. And so it just goes to show you that this nation is continuing the trend of undermining the interest of poor people, uh, that just don't care about them. So it says, this is compared to just 3% of Americans with a household income of $100,000 or more. The survey also found that brick and mortar services are less accessible to black Americans. I just said that. While 14% of black Americans said they do not have a local branch, this was only the case for 8% of white Americans. So again, America looks out for white people. And if you still sit here talking about you want to stay in Babylon and have at it, honey, I I'm over it. With the rampant inflation and the cost of living soaring, experts warn that customers may be more likely to want to discuss their finances with their bank in person. And I find that very um, challenging now because uh, you have they want you to go online and talk to a chat bot. So you're dealing with somebody who, who you can't see. Uh, they want you to call and then wait for somebody to call you back. And, you know, it's still not like talking to a real person, especially when you're dealing with somebody who has a language barrier. Um, it's just really annoying to be able to not be able to go into a bank and get help from a real person. But that's the way that this world is going because they don't want to deal with people. They, the big corporations want to lower their overhead costs, have your money and do what they want to with it and you're at their um you know disposal you you just can't do anything about it unless you just do like the old folks did don't trust banks don't use them but i don't know how you're going to do that because there's no way they're getting away from having hard currency like the dollar is getting ready to go away we don't have gold or silver or some other type of currency from another nation that you can use like a foreign exchange um, or just gold and silver in general because everybody's going back to the gold standard. What are you going to do? Even some nations are having their CBDCs backed by gold. So um, it's just some interesting times. Branches provide a lifeline for anyone looking to speak to a staff member or carry out simple tasks such as a cashing, such as cashing a check, making a deposit, or accessing cash. And so the other reason that you get rid of these bank branches is because you will not be able to access cash. Cash is going away. So they don't need bank branches. If they're gonna be doing everything digital, you're gonna be doing it from you're gonna be banking from your phone or your computer which is why they invested in all this broadband internet and want everybody to have a tablet or a phone or a computer for free. 
According to the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, a third of the locations that closed between 2017 and 2021 occurred in areas that were predominantly lower income and majority minority. Accelerating closures run a risk of communities being becoming so-called banking deserts when they are without access to a bank or credit union within 10 miles, leaving residents increasingly vulnerable to falling prey to high fee lending options such as payday loans. And that's what they want anyway, because at the end of the day, when you start following the money, all the money leads back to the same people. I mean, you could trace a lot of these banking um, or financial solutions back to BlackRock. Like it's just a maze of companies, shell companies and corporations in different states, you know, registered LLCs. By the time you get to wherever you're trying to get to, you reach BlackRock. So, you know, living in this place is really uh, disheartening because you just always got to be dealing with scams, which is why I'm just I'm over it like you can't beat this system you just can't um as banks are axing branches they are also increasingly turning toward digital services a development which was sped up hugely by the COVID-19 pandemic that's what they want they want you to go digital the digitalization of of the globe is here. According to Oppenham's research, half of Americans prefer to pay using a digital payment method instead of cash. Preference for using digital payment methods also rise fairly steadily with income, likely due to the expense barrier to entry. Around two in five, some 44% of those who make less than $50,000 a year prefer digital payment methods. That's because they don't really understand what that means for them. If they understood that having more digital payment methods means you're going to have fewer real people, which means there'll be fewer opportunities for employment in your community, which means more self-checkout, which means... Um, you know, you're not going to be able to deal with a real person, say, if you want to have a conversation about why your deposit isn't showing up, you got some charges on your account that need to be taken off, Um, especially now in the age of folks stealing your identity or stealing your bank card and you're having, you know, charges charged to your account that you didn't um, make. It's going to be a lot more difficult trying to get those things taken care of, going in and and making huge purchases uh, or having uh, limits raised or lowered because you need to take care of some business. That's difficult when you don't have branches in your community. And, you know, for us, it's just going to get a lot worse. Around two in five, some 44% of those who make less than $50,000 prefer digital payment methods compared to 59% of those who make $100,000 or more. That's because people who make $100,000 or more understand their rights. They understand, um, and I'm not saying all, but I'm just saying you just have a totally different way of looking at how things could go bad quickly and you lose your freedoms and you lose your rights. Whereas Poorer people tend to just think about convenience and they just have a a different mindset. It's I can do what the rich folks do. I'm good. Not understanding that sometimes you're shooting yourself in the foot by choosing the options that you choose. Convenience is extremely problematic. Anytime somebody offers you something and says it's going to make your life better or more, it's going to be more convenient. You should be looking sideways because that is the trap. Grace Miller, research manager at Openum, and those are, they always doing research, always, always, said, despite the majority of Americans preferring digital uh, 
preferring digital payment methods over cash, recent bank closures across the United States are still causing concern. Just because you choose a digital option doesn't mean you don't want to have a cash option as well. So that's why it's alarming. Notably, the digital transition showcases disparities in accessibility, especially for Americans with lower household incomes. As the financial landscape evolves and is evolving, it's important we don't overlook populations negatively affected by bank closures and the growing popularity of digital payment methods. The largest spate of bank closures across the U.S. in even in the first seven months of this year brings the total since 2019 to 10,680. That's crazy. So it says a handful affected small region regional banks, but nationals include Wells Fargo, Chase, and U.S. Bank represented the bulk. So closures this year are 1114. And so you can see large states like Pennsylvania, Delaware, Virginia, the DMV area, New Jersey, have more closures. So this is while California had the most closures in absolute terms, New Jersey suffered the greatest losses per capita with a total of 83. It was trailed by Washington, D.C. and Connecticut. So the 10 worst offenders, PNC, U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo, J.P. Chase, Morgan, J.P. I'm sorry, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Santander, Citizens Bank, Huntington Bank, m and Bank, and Fifth Third Bank. PNC was the worst offender, accessing a total of 201 bank branches in just seven months. U.S. Bank and Wells Fargo, Fargo were close behind, having closed 185 and 160 bank branches respectively. A spokesman for Wells Fargo told DailyMail.com last month that although branches in many regions are closing, a smaller number are opening in a handful of successful markets. Um, and so when you talk about successful markets, I, I mean, I just have to say that banking in the hood is just totally different. Um, banking in lower income communities is different because people don't have wealth. So they use the banks to cash checks and to withdraw money if they have direct deposits. It's not a whole lot of opportunity for banks to make money off of those customers. And so what they do is, um, you know, close the branches down because they can't make money off of those folks, except for like overdraft fees. Um, they will close folks' accounts uh, for fraud. Uh, just just a lot of things that they do to really inconvenience people. And so people kind of get turned off by that and they will leave. And I'm not saying that people don't have things going on. They're not fraudulent activities or whatever, but sometimes, you know, People legitimately are trying to do business and these banks are giving them a hard time. Also, a lot of rules have changed over the last 15, 20 years, especially like deposits. You got to make a deposit. No, people can't make deposits for you. There's a lot of anti-money money laundering laws on the books now. So banks have to check more information. And so banking has become really intrusive. And so you know, black people in general, we, we understand uh, surveillance like no other group of people. And so they're turned off by that and they don't want any parts of it. So they have navigated to other uh, digital platforms to do business and to, to bank that works for them which also harms the banks. So they're like, well, if y'all going to use cash app and so on and so forth, then we'll just close the banks. Then when you need a bank, you won't be able to, you know, have that. So, you know, again, this part of it is 
we shot ourselves in the foot by using these different platforms, although they were easier. In the big scheme of things, we don't understand that all of them are connected. It's the same technology, it comes from the same people. And so we're all like using these different little pilot projects, not understanding that the goal is to get us to this digitalization where we are accustomed to using digital money, not having paper money or hard money, and not needing a brick and mortar bank. While the, the total number of branches continues to decline, new branches are being opened in high growth neighborhoods of existing markets, allowing us to offer more branch convenience, they said in a statement. We also we may also open new branches where we combine two older existing branches into a better situated location. Additionally, customers use our wide range of digital capabilities for many of their banking needs. As a result, more transactions are happening outside of the branch. So um, a lot of things are happening with banking and I just want you to pay attention to how fast these bank branches are closing. Like every week there are bank branches closing all over the country. A lot of them are happening in major cities and uh, we've talked about why that could be um, the case, but I personally believe that they're getting ready to collapse the system. And so they don't need these brick and mortar banks. They don't want these expenses. They don't need the overhead for staff. Staff can either work at home or they may not need as many staff because, um, you know, people will be able to do banking online and they have AI and um, the digitalization of the banking systems to um, minimize the need for like humans to actually do the work. So that's less money they have to spend. Uh, it's also helping them transition us into this new digital, digital age of money and currency. So anyway, I want out of this. I don't want none of it. Uh, I just don't want none of it. But I know we're going to have to go into it to a certain degree. And, um, you know, I'm saying all this to say, if you have money in a bank, you should only keep what you need to pay your bills. If you have savings, you should consider converting those savings into silver and gold, uh, other um, forms of currency that you can actually possess on your person. You should be thinking about where you're going to keep your treasures. You do not want to keep all your eggs in one basket. You do not want to keep all your stuff in your house. You do not want to put your stuff in an institution that could be raided should things go awry and they come take your stuff. Then you have nothing. Uh, you should be considering if you have money in savings, like, and I, when I say money, I mean numbers on the screen, numbers on paper, but you have nothing in your hand. You may want to consider taking the L on your, your, your tax losses, pay the taxes, get your treasures in your hand, because as you can see, this country is doling out money it does not have for war. It's doling out money to buy, uh, to, to pay ransom for uh, people in prison in exchange for stuff. Lots of things happening and we need to be aware so that we're not caught off guard. So. The goal of this is to just tell you banks are closing. A lot of banks are closing and this system is transitioning. They got to create the chaos so that they can bring the order that they want. It does not have anything to do with you. They do not care about what you want. They don't care about what you need. We are slaves, period. Get that in your head. You can think you're not a slave, but they're going to show you you're a slave in this system. You're going to be a slave of this world until you leave it. And so as they transition us, it's going to be painful for a lot of people. So if you have money to buy things, if you have savings, or if you, there's 
and you have resources that you can convert to buy tangible goods so that when you need them, you will have them on your person. You don't have to run out and go to the store and try to get something and fight with people or you don't have, you know, you can pay up your bills in advance, pay off stuff, pay your mortgage off, um, you know, pay up some utility bills and things in advance. You got to be creative. If you got children, grandchildren, you may want to consider sharing that with them because everybody going to suffer. Um, and so your little money ain't going to do no good. Um sitting on a computer screen and you can't access it and it's going to do you no good. You will have worked your whole entire life or saved or did all the right stuff. And then somebody um, comes and takes your money. When the system goes down, you had money. When it comes back up, you have less money or no money and nothing you're going to be able to do about it. So, um, just make sure you're preparing for anything and everything. Have a contingency plan for everything. And notice that nobody's talking about this kind of stuff. Um, we talk about it here because I want y'all to be ready. As the poorest group, one of the poorest groups and least protected groups in this country, in this world, it's up to us to look out for us. And so I'm looking out for us. Y'all better get ready because these folks are not playing with us. They say we're going to suffer. And they're planning on us suffering. So try to minimize the suffering as much as possible. Do your part because nobody's coming to save you. All right. This is Marley K. Please like this video. Uh, leave a comment so that the algorithms will pick it up and share it with other people. Hit that subscribe button so that anytime I upload new content, you will be able to view it. Please make sure that you subscribe to my Odyssey and Rumble channels in the event that this channel is taken down. Um, all the videos that I've posted on YouTube are backed up on Odyssey channel, not on the Rumble channel, but I will be able to go live on the Rumble channel if I needed to or upload new content. Follow me on social media. I am on Instagram and I, on, I am on Facebook, although I do not post there regularly. I will post there in the event that I am booted or there's some wild, crazy stuff happening. I'll be posting everywhere until I can. Lastly, if you'd like to support the channel, links are in the, in the description um, on ways that you could support the channel. Um, this is a labor of love. We do not have any affiliates. I do not have any affiliates. There is no we. There is just me in the most high. <laughs> so um, if you uh, feel led to, you can share. Links are in the description. If you uh, have already supported me, I thank you. Um, I'm eternally grateful because you could do anything you wanted to with your hard-earned money. And if you choose to support me, I thank you. And others like me, not just me, there are a whole lot of other people sacrificing to bring you this information that um, the Most High has imparted in us. And we are taking huge risk and taking lots of L's uh, emotionally, <laughs> physically, financially, so um, socially. So uh, when we are blessed by you, we, we feel the love. So just make sure that... Um, you don't forget about the people who are sacrificing so that you will have um, information on how to navigate these treacherous times. Lastly, continue to pray and seek the most high because there ain't no way we getting out of this without some supernatural intervention, period. Try to wake up people. It's hard, but try to wake them up. Um, I'm, I'm seeing more people come to the realization that this is the end of the road or something is getting ready to happen. They may not know it's the end of the road, but they know something is getting ready to happen. Also, make sure that um, you continue to uh, obey the law, statutes and commandments uh, set by the most high. Repent daily for sins of commission and sins of omission and continue to prep. Just I can't stress that enough. Continue to prep. 
as long as nothing happens, as long as the prices are good, as long as you have resources, as long as your money is still good, you have time. So use this information as a data point. Use it as a warning. You will not get any warnings because this country is not going to notify you that it's getting, giving up the ghost and giving up, getting ready to give over its power to the beast. Uh, so just be ready, family. Be ready. All right. Love y'all. This is Marley Kay and I am out.